What to do, y'all? This is Chris Evans, and this is Talking Data and More. And today I have a very special guest that has enabled SMBs to enterprise customers and global customers. Not only has he made these customers data driven, but he's also allowed the customers to be more predictable and analytical with their data. So I want you all to welcome my guest, CTO of Precision Analytics Group, Chris Williams. What to do, Chris? Hey, Chris, it's wonderful to be back with you today. Um, as you said, my name is Chris Williams. I am the Chief Tactical Officer for Precision Analytics Group, a small business analytics consulting firm. We're based out of Portland, Oregon, and we are certified by the state of Oregon as an emerging small business, as well as a minority business entity. We've been in existence for two years, but I've been in the business analytics and predictive analytics field for about 25, from building analytic systems to modeling and developing reports on those analytic systems. And it's a real pleasure to be here today. That's awesome, Chris. Uh, and it's a pleasure to even have you on based on your knowledge and the value that you're providing your customers, right? And, and you know, I have to ask before we get into it, as you can tell from the background, you the love of my of college. Yeah, so I gotta ask you, you know, who is your favorite comic book, character, anime, you know, I got to ask and why, right? Come on. <laughs> you know, this is funny. This is an excellent question because I absolutely love anime and I love fictional characters. Um, with being COVID and everything, we've been forced probably primarily to stay at home. So we've been getting reacquainted with some of the fictional characters, characters that I've loved in the past and also learning new ones thanks to, you know, online videos and movies and such like that. So However, after careful thought, I'm going to keep this one pretty mainstream and I'm going to go with Luke Cage. The dude has power and a no-nonsense attitude. Um, and I feel this way for seven, uh, several reasons. First of all, his story is empowering. Uh, Cage being an ex-conflict in prison for a crime he did not commit, who gained superhuman strength for an unbreakable skin after being subjected voluntarily to an experimental procedure. Once freed, he became a hero for hire in one of the roughest, toughest cities in one of the roughest boroughs in those cities, New York City and Harlem. So he's the ultimate lethal weapon for good. Second, he may have one of the best catchphrases I've ever heard, sweet Christmas. I mean, really, who says that anyway? He can kick your face in and just say sweet Christmas and, and it all seems to be okay after that. <laughs> Uh, I so, love it, Chris. I love that. <laughs> and 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 the last one is uh, actually more a little bit more serious uh, than the sweet Christmas is the mantra that he lives by. Probably something that we all should really consider at one, some point in our lives is never backward, always forward. Progress is imperative, not just professionally but also personally. We always should strive to get better in some capacity, and moving forward is one of the only ways you can do that. I totally agree. And as you can see, like I said, Luke Cage right here. And I think that's a great superhero and what he embodies, right? So that that's awesome, Chris. And I'm hoping in Netflix, even though you cancel it, maybe Disney, bring it back. You know, the Luke Cage, the Punisher, the Flash, come on, bring it back. Right? <laughs> I think I really appreciate that. Yeah, the interaction with uh, Jessica Jones and and Luke Cage, and if that can just maybe pull a little bit more out of each other, um, yep. I think that you will probably see that. I mean, Iron Fist is fine, but the dichotomy between those three, um, I have a feeling somewhere down the line you're going to see a little bit more of Luke Cage. It may take some other navigable things behind the scenes to make it happen, but no one can, they can't even argue about how wonderful the series has been. And it's not a matter of fully totally agree. <laughs> yep. And, and there's some bubblings that that one is coming back. So I totally agree with you that they're, they're going to need to bring that one back. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and you know, Chris, as you talk about, you know, Luke Cage and his superpowers, right? Um, you know, kind and also being in one of the toughest cities in uh, Harlem, right? And saving, you know, all the people that need to be saved. And just like what you're doing today as the CTO, you're saving your customers. You're helping them to be data driven. You're working with the customers, your users, and you're helping them facilitate the data blending, right? You're empowering them with the data analytics, but the predictive analytics. Can you talk about how are you doing this today with those customers and with those business users? 
Absolutely. Uh, when analyzing what an organization needs, you first need to identify the problems and initiatives. This sounds simple, but it's so important. You, once you agree on those, you need to be certain that you have the data available to answer those. So I liken this process to preparing a nice dinner. Uh, you, to make the meal, you need to determine what you need to do so. In some cases, you may already have all of the ingredients to prepare the meal. In other cases, you may need to go to the grocery store to get more ingredients. You know, this is interesting because when performing analytics, you follow the same process. First, a client might check in-house to see if they have all the data necessary to answer a use case or two. If they don't, then we brainstorm on how to get that data. Sometimes it involves actually going outside externally to try to retrieve that data and try to figure out how long it takes to get those accounts, converting the data, data for, to something that they can use and what kind of security needs to be implemented from that data. Or it may be as simple as adding to a process in which you've already that already exists to actually pull more data from that particular data source. So you have a couple pronged you know, attack or it could be a combination of both. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to understand truly what you have. Have you gotten everything out of what you're expecting from that data source? If you have, and you still don't have that data needed to answer that use case, then you wanna look outside and say, okay, uh, I know that this entity has this data, I need to figure out what I can do to get that. Compile the two and you should have your answers for that particular use case and you're off and running. I, I love that too. And Chris, I love the, the analogy where he uses about preparing the dinner. Even the, a chef has his sous chefs. He has people helping them understand where, hey, well, these are the ingredients we need. What do we need to get? What is the data we need? I love the way you describe that and put that together. It's very, very, very true. And I love how you talk about how do you look outside the box because you may not have everything there now your point you may have to look outside to provide them and your customers the value awesome yeah and and the, the, just to add on to that i was cooking yesterday and um so what happens when you go to a store without a list you keep forgetting stuff so you have to uh, make sure that you document everything that you really need so that trip is only one so that you know you know exactly what you're looking for because if you keep running around in circles trying to figure out what it is that you need because you haven't really documented properly you're going to be wasting time but money uh, person hours and time which means money so that turns into a risk uh, which you don't which is unnecessary that can be avoided so 